me to the king. All right. Take me to the cross. Meet me at the cross so that I can gaze upon the glory. Yes. Those are some good words. Yes. Mighty good words. Yes. How many of you want to meet him at the cross? This morning, you don't have to go to the cross because he left the cross. Amen. He's at the right hand of our God Amen. waiting for us Amen. to come on home. Amen. Glory be to God. God may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. To the pastor in his absence, Pastor Williams, to the First Lady, Sister Williams, to this wonderful that Pastor Williams has Hearns, Burns, and Governor. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. My heart goes out to each one of them. But they treat me very well. To the deacons, trustees, ushers, to all the saints of God Amen. in the house of God. To a musician, hallelujah, <laughs> bringing us fine music from on high. Greetings from the Elk Run Baptist Church on the other side of the mountain. Amen. Amen. I greet you all in the matchless name of Jesus. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. Isn't that right? Amen. Amen. I hear you know, before I forget, before I don't get a ride home to my wife. Amen. You mean you gotta remember to be honorable. Amen. I'm leaving you up here hanging by myself. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But they play a part. Those of you who are married, they play a part in our lives also. Amen. Amen. Are you ready to hear something? Amen. Amen. Hear something from the Lord? Yes. Yeah. Well, you have already heard the scripture reading. From book of Ephesians chapter 6 I just want to reiterate the 18th, 19th, and 20th verse one more time Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador to in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. The church say amen. amen. For a subject this morning, I would like to use these words. Power of prayer. Amen. Power of prayer. The scripture says a little further up in verse in uh, chapter six. 
verse 12. It says that we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules, rulers of darkness of this age against spiritual wickedness in high places. And so, my friends, if we are going to be victorious in the battle, you see, it is a battle that we're in. You may not have the scars that I have, but if you live long enough, and if you stay in God's word, <coughs> what was that you said, my sister? You will. You will. Get it. If we are going to be engaged and enjoined in the battle, then the scripture says that there are some things we need to put on and keep on. Yes. And then there are some weapons that we need to take up. Yes. You see, we are to put on the girdle of truth. All right. We are to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Yes. We are to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel Amen. of peace. Yeah. And we've got to take up the shield of faith. You've got to take up the helmet of salvation. Amen. Then you've got to take up the sword of the Spirit which is the Word of God. Yeah. The only way you can be victorious in warfare against the devil is that you've got to be familiar intimately with the Word of God. Demons tremble at the sound of that name. Strongholds are broken when we enjoin the Word of God. But we have no power of ourselves, church. Amen. You see, the power is in the Word of God. Amen. Many Christians tend to have a cursory knowledge of Scripture. In other words, they know the books of the Bible. But that's about it. And then there are some Christians who know a, a lot about Scripture knowledge. And they are well versed in interpretation of Scripture. They understand a whole lot about the Bible. But there is still not much power in that. You see, it's not until the word is spoken, church. It is not until the word comes out of your mouth that the effectual purpose prayer of the life will avail as much. But you've got to speak the word, saints. You've got to tell somebody yeah. what God has done. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Yeah. Not only must your life be an example in your everyday walk, but you've got to say something. Yeah. Scripture says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. In other words, you've got to open your mouth. Yeah, right. It's just not 
effectuous if it's just in your mind. Because as long as the word is in your in your head, it's a thought. But when it comes out of your mouth, it's the spoken word. Can I get a witness this morning? And the Holy Spirit can only do something with it when you speak power in your own life. I mean, you know that. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. So now we we look at Ephesians in the last chapter. And we see that we're wrapping up the outfit for the battle. Everything we need to do battle with, the devil has been given to us in Scripture, saints. In the Word of God. And here is what we need finally to be victorious over the devil. You see, we walk around complaining. How are we going to get out of this? How come the devil's always messing with me? Everybody's on my case. But on Sunday morning, you say that you're a child of God. You've been born again. That you believe in His holy word. What you need to remember, saints, is that you need the power of prayer. Because the girdle of truth the breastplate plate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel of peace without prayer. Saints, I want to tell you this morning, it is all in effect. The shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, all of these are ineffective without powerful prayer. Fervent prayer, honest prayer, specific prayer. Mm -hmm. You've got to tell God, saints, Come on. Come on. specifically what you want Him to do about this particular situation yeah. that's in your life. Can I get a witness? If you don't, prayer, if you do, prayer will help you stand against the wiles of the devil. Amen. I've been here a couple of times. And I don't know if y'all remember my grandson. He was sitting in the back, right corner over there. Right now, he's visiting. Western State. Y'all may not know what that is. <clears throat> Y'all may not have anybody that ever visited Western State. But see, just like in the Bible, there was a demonic man that Jesus had to take that demon out of. Before he was of any good to Jesus. Amen. My grandson has schizophrenia. It's a sickness. Yes. How many you know that sicknesses can be healed? can be healed Amen. no matter what you got Amen. no matter what Amen. you're going through yes. sicknesses can be healed yes. 
So I want y'all to remember him in your prayers. Amen. 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 The fervent prayer of the righteous availeth yeah, right. yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. Are any righteous ones in here today? situation to let you know that there is power yeah. in prayer. Yeah. Yeah. And if any of you got children yes. and see them from birth all the way up to whew, what they say they grown at 18, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you should know the power of prayer yeah. if you're in the word of God. Because they will yes. make you bend your knee. <laughs> Put your hands together. Yes. Put your hands up in the air. Amen. Shout out to God, help me. But see, you gotta you gotta speak the word to God. Yes. Glory be to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Let me give you a working definition of prayer. You might not get this, but if you do, that's fine. If you don't, you're going to pray for it. <laughs> a working definition of prayer is this. It is this earth given heaven permission to interfere with her affairs. Did y'all get that? It is the earth, this earth, giving heaven permission to interfere with her affairs. Well, you might be thinking now, I got some preachers up in here. Y'all might be thinking theologically, where is this preacher going with that? That don't sound right. But let me explain it to you. Let me, let me set this plain the course of prayer. You see, God knows what we're doing. Amen? Amen. He knows what we're doing, when we do it, how we do it, before we do it, all of that. He knows. Isn't that right? He knows what we're up against. But God will not get involved, church, until you talk to Him. Until you ask Him. Until you open up your mouth and say, Lord, it's me again. Yes. Standing yes. in the need of prayer. Yes. You see, he already knows. Yes. But he wants you, he wants to hear it for himself. It's just like your children when they were little. And little Johnny was a little afraid to come up and say, Can I have a bite for Christmas? And, and, and he, he, he kind of shuffled around and, and, and you stood there watching him. What is it, son? What is it that you want? What is it that you need? And then finally, you might have already had an inclination of what he wanted. But Bobby next door had a bite. Johnny down the street had a bite. Yeah. But your boy didn't have a bite. So he finally got it out. And once he gets it out, you can act on it because he asks for it. Amen. God is the same way. He already knows what you need. Sometimes he doesn't pay attention to our wants. 
but he'll look at our needs yeah. in this life. Amen. 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 There's a lot of things that I want, but I know where I'm stationed at in life now, I'm just not going to get it. Unless, 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 unless one of y'all hit the lottery and say, I, if I stay up, I really don't want all this money. <laughs> you take it and do what you want with it. That's the only way I'm going to get what I want. And I know that's not going to happen either. <laughs> but those are just our wants. We can live without our wants. Isn't that right? But there's some things that we need in this life. And God will take care of our needs, church. Amen. So, when you call out to Jesus, He'll help you, saints. When you call out to Him, when you speak the words to him today the spirit of Christ is in this church I feel it if you don't feel it then maybe we need to move this community table and bring a casket up here but there's life in this church the spirit of the living God is in this church. Amen. Amen. And he's right here. And if there's anything that any of you need today, by the time this sermon is over with, <coughs> if you don't ask him for it, that spirit's going to walk right by your feet and leave you in wanting. Amen? Amen? You see, when you need the Lord badly enough, when your situation gets desperate enough, you don't care who sits next to you. You don't care who is watching you. You don't bother about who will see you cry tears of joy are tears of sadness. Yeah. All you need to do is how our Father. Yeah. I stretch my hands to thee. Yeah. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You see, you can act like you don't know him if you want to. But if your situation it's bad enough, church. And when you can't handle it like you think you can, he'll help you. But you've got to ask. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 18. It says, we are to be involved in all kinds of prayer. Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. That means we ought to be involved in all kinds of prayer. What do you mean by that? I mean that you need to pray wherever you are and for whatever you are doing. You need to pray all the time, church. You need to pray, pray, and pray right. in season, yeah. out of season. Right. Well, Father, I need you now. Yeah. Yeah. That's your prayer. Yeah. And right away, he'll come to you. I need you to make a way out of no way. You see, church, prayer works. Amen. Prayer is you asking God to interfere in your situation. Can I get a witness? I don't know if any of you got any situations today, but I know my 
grandson has got one. And you see, you see, schizophrenia is when you can't can differentiate the real world from something that's really not going on at all. Amen. Amen. And your mind goes back and forth, in and out. And you act as if you might be a lunatic. But that's the nature of schizophrenia. It's a sickness. But I believe that though he may not be able, I can stand in for him. And say, Lord, look at him. He's your child. Yes. Right. Before all this happened, he got saved. Amen. So he's still his child. Yes. 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 And if he can't call on him, I will. Amen. 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 We've got to 
control ourselves, church. Yeah, and continue to pray prayers powerful. Yeah. 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 I've been through much physically to know that it is true. Amen. Yeah. Brain surgery, heart surgery, oh. cancer, Jesus. hand surgery. Mm -hmm. I've been through it all. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I say, Lord, what's next? Then I think about what I just said. You really don't want to know what's next. It might be your last of whatever. But still, you see, prayer, church, is the energy that enables us Christians as a soldier to wear the armor and yield the sword. We cannot fight this battle on our own power. No matter how strong or talented we may think we are. You remember when Joshua used the sword down in the valley. It took both to defeat Amalek. Moses' intercession on the mountaintop and Joshua's use of the sword in the valley. You see, prayer is the power for victory. But not just any kind of prayer. Paul tells us how to pray if we are to defeat Satan. We are to pray always. This does not mean always saying prayer. We are not heard for our much speaking, if you will. Prayer without ceasing says to us, always be in communion with the Lord. Amen. Keep the receiver off the hook, church. All right, right now. Never say, never have to say when you pray, Lord, we come into thy presence. Because you never or should have never left his presence. A Christian, that's what we are, right? Yeah. Must pray always. Because he is always subject to temptation. Did I just say something like that? Yeah. And attacks of the devil. Yeah. Always. Somebody's going to get attacked when we leave out of here. Yeah. Just to see how strong you are. Right. Amen. Right. A surprise attack has defeated more than one believer who forgot to pray without ceasing. Right. Then there's prayer with all prayer. There's more than one kind of praying. And it says so in the scripture. Prayer, supplication, intercession, and thanksgiving. The believer who prays only asks, only to ask for things is missing out on blessings that come with intercession and giving of thanks. In fact, thanksgiving is a great prayer weapon Amen. for defeating Satan. Yeah. Prayer changes things. Yeah. As much as prayer changes things, intercession for others can bring victory yeah. in our own life. Yeah. You want victory in your own life? Pray for my grandson. Amen. Pray for the sisters. I didn't hear all your testimony, but she was going through something that somebody else was. Yes. Pray for her. Yes. Glory be to God. Amen. And God will lift you up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. You remember the story of Job? Forty second chapter and the tenth verse says, And the Lord turned. 
the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. You know what his friends did? They messed him up. I don't talk about him. Say he was doing this and doing that. Job wasn't doing nothing but being a righteous man. Glory be to God. And then, then there's prayer in the spirit. I'm almost done. I that. The Bible formula is that we pray to the Father through the Son and in the Spirit. Romans 8, 26 and 27, look it up later, tells us that only in the Spirit's power can we pray in the will of God. Otherwise, our praying could be selfish and out of the will of God. In the Old Testament tabernacle, there was a small golden altar standing before the veil. And here we find a priest burning the incense. And the incense is a picture of prayer church. It had to be mixed according to God's plan. It could not be counterfeited by man. The fire on the altar is a picture of the Holy Spirit. For it is He who takes our prayers and it ignites them in the will of God. It is possible to pray fervently in the flesh and never get through to God at all. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. So you can't be in the flesh trying to pray. You can't be out in the street messing around trying to pray that you don't get caught. It's just not going to work. Because everybody watches the saints of God. And don't you know that somebody watching each and every one of us? There goes Sister So and So, Tiffany and me. They watch. They go to Nick and Harry. Where do you think he go? He don't know he's watching him. See? People watching all of us. We can't think we invisible because we ain't God's in a, in a palm of God's hand. Folk always watching God's children. Those who are not in the Lord, I call them Satan's gifts. Because they want to try to trip you up. But if you do right and walk right, Nothing to say about <laughs> Then there's prayer with your eyes open. And in, in, in the Bible it says, um, it's just the word watching. Amen. Watching means keeping on the alert. The phrase, the phrase, watch and pray, is often occurs in the Bible. And if you look at Nehemiah, when repairing the walls of Jerusalem, and the enemy was trying to stop the work of the Lord, Nehemiah defeated the enemy by watching and praying, church. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto God and said, watch. Verse chapter 4, Nehemiah, verse 9. Watch and pray is the secret of victory over this whole world. The flesh and the devil included 
So if you're not satisfied with who's running for office, watch and pray. And then put my name in the ballot. <laughs> I'm just kidding about that. I wouldn't touch it. They'll dig up too much stuff in my past and try to bring me down. If we leave the past alone. Isn't that right? Because we're walking anew. But those in the world, they try to bounce on you by what you've done in the past, which now to us don't matter because it's awful in the past. It, it's forgotten. When we, when we got saved, it's under the rug. Amen. Just don't try to pull the rug back up. Glory to God. Amen. You remember Peter, when he went to sleep, when he should have been praying and the result was victory for Satan. Over in Mark chapter 14, God expects us to use our God-given senses, church, led by the Spirit, so that when we detect Satan, when he is beginning to work, we can go to God. Okay. Amen? And lastly, We got to keep on praying. Amen. 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 The word perseverance simply means to stick to it and not quit. Amen. The early believers prayed that way. And we also should pray that way. Perseverance in prayer does not mean we are trying to twist God's arm, but rather that we are deeply concerned and burdened and cannot rest until we get an answer from God, saints. As Robert's Law puts it, prayer is not getting man's will done in heaven. It's getting God's will done on earth. Amen. And most of us quit praying just before God is about to give us the victory. Now everybody is so constituted that he can that he can sincerely spend a whole night in prayer. But if all of us can persevere in prayer far more than we do. The early church prayed without ceasing when Peter was in prison and at the last moment God gave them their answer. It's found over in Acts 12 verses 1 through 19. Keep on praying saints until the Spirit stops you or the Father above answers you. Just about the time you feel like quitting God will give the answer. The Lord's Prayer begins with our Father, not my Father. We pray as a part of a great family that is also taking to talking to God. And we ought to pray for the other members of the family all of us. Even Paul asked for the prayer support of the Ephesians. And he had been to the third heaven and back. If Paul needed the prayers of the saints, how much more do you and I need them Amen. together? Amen. If my prayers help another believer defeat Satan, then that victory will help me too. Amen. Note that Paul did not ask them to pray for his comfort or safety, but for the effectiveness of his witness and his ministry. Amen. Amen. 
saints from Jesus for the cross. After he told all day and all night, being whipped and scourged, spat upon, talked about, whipped, crowned with thorns, put on his head, being beaten with every step of the way, took on God's head. After he got up, after they put him on the cross, he still prayed. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We too need to forgive our enemies, for they know not what Don't get like they get all bit out of shape. Going back to what we used to do. Even though it's hard sometimes. I know you all say, boy, if I wasn't who I am now, I would. You know what the rest of that is. That's what we're not to do. Not to go back to the way we used to But to stand strong. To pray. Use the power of prayer in your everyday life. Because it will help us make our day better. Our prayers will be answered when we speak to God the right way. Don't go asking for stupid stuff. Saints of God should not be stupid. We see enough stupidity on TV as it is. And in everyday life, it's so much around us I'm thinking about going and getting into the t-shirt field. All I'm going to do is make a bunch of t-shirts. I'm going to put a great big old S in the front. And when I see somebody, both of these are unsafe acting stupid. I'm going to hand them a t-shirt. They're going to say, what's the answer for, Superman? <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> All of our politicians need them. <laughs> At least most of them. Uh, <laughs> Even some of the churches got some in. I can't say some of them. I ain't talking about y'all. I ain't talking about my church. So I need to go back there. I want to come back here. Amen. But they're out there, church. They're out there. But look, prayer is the right thing to do. And everybody needs prayer. It's noted in the church we pray. Invocation program says we pray, we pray after the offering. We're going to pray at the end of the service. Prayer is needed. Prayer is the righteous thing to do. Prayer will keep us safe. For the most part, I'm not going to say you're not going to get in trouble. But we, 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 we can. Avoid a lot of things in our life. If we give a prayers to God. Amen. Amen. For even before he was taken to come out his head, he went and prayed. His disciples couldn't even stay up. 
fact did not deteriorate. He prayed anyhow. So if there's somebody at your house and you want to pray, and they say, I'm tired, you go ahead and pray, I'll catch up with you later. Go ahead and pray. The Lord still want to hear you. And he'll deal with the rest later. Amen. Church, God is a good God. He's an awesome God. He's a mighty God. And prayer will certainly change 